What's going on everyone? In today's episode, we're gonna be direct sowing some seeds. And a lot of you wanna follow along for this because if you're growing in a similar climate to us, you're gonna to wanna to get your seeds in the ground because a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be direct sowing in the garden needs to be started right now or near this time so it has enough time before it gets too warm. A lot of your cold weather stuff can handle this nasty weather that we're getting, but it can't handle the heat once the heat arrives. So with that, we're gonna get some of these beds prepped and ready to plan. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we've done is we applied a nice layer of compost. I can't stress that enough. This layer of compost is great because not only does it allow us to plant so much sooner because it's not frozen, it's fresh compost on top of the soil, but it also is gonna amend the soil, soften the soil, and fertilize our crops. So it's really, really awesome. Now the next thing we've done is we've gone and we've actually worked in some trifecta, which is an all-purpose fertilizer, to give our plants the best chance of success. And then the final thing that we've done is we've actually kind of loosely incorporated it to the, uh, to the, old, the old soil that was in this bed. Now, if you don't do that, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find really defined layers in your soil and your roots are gonna have, have a hard time developing into those different layers. It's better if it's slightly homogenous. And so all we've done is we simply kind of flipped the soil, not really dug the soil. We believe in more of a no dig approach to gardening. That's where it's minimal disturbance but we have kind of worked that top one inch of old soil in with this other fresh compost we laid on top. So it's a little more homogenous. Next we're gonna do, we're just gonna draw our rows. Now a lot of you know that we garden using what's called high intensity. High intensity is super important to us because it allows us to grow at least two times the amount of food in half the space. And that's at a minimum. Sometimes it's four times the amount of food in half the space, meaning we're getting eight times the production as you would normally. The whole difference between high intensity and traditional gardening is that traditional gardening is based on the idea of large scale agriculture being scaled down to the home garden. And what we've always said is that that doesn't work. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of that, all that spacing and throw out the window. And we're gonna get so much more food in these beds here. These beds are only about 50 square feet. And you'll notice our rows are only about five inches apart. Now the different crops we're gonna be sowing can handle really close spacing, which is awesome. It's gonna allow us to crowd our beds so that there's no bare soil exposed. Open, open soil is left open for sunlight to radiate down and radiate the soil. It also opens up the soil to weed seeds, evaporation, soil degradation, nothing good comes from bare soil. And so by the time these beds are totally full, we're gonna be left with a whole bed that is just absolutely lush, like a carpet of green growth. All right, so this whole bed here is gonna contain all of the early season crops that we're gonna be starting today. Now, it's not all of the crops we're gonna be starting. As we've talked about this before on this channel, we practice what's called succession sowing. And that means that this bed right here is gonna contain all the stuff we're starting today, but then in this bed that had our peppers in it and still don't look at that. Uh, <laughs> it's got our, our peppers still in it, but once we get those pulled out, we're gonna plant our next succession in about two weeks. And that means that when this bed matures, we're gonna have all the crops that we're gonna talk about kind of maturing at different times throughout the season, but just one bed over, there'll be another two weeks behind. So we don't have everything maturing all at the same time, meaning we're gonna have a little bit more long of a, of a harvest to enjoy. And so keep that in mind. Don't start everything all at once. I mean, you can, but it's a lot to eat and you get to kind of enjoy more of your garden through more of the season. All right, let's jump into it. So in this bed right here, in this part of the bed, we have two rows that's gonna be four varieties of beets. Next, we have two rows that we're gonna to designate to carrots. Up next, we got three rows of lettuce here. Now these lettuce rows are all gonna be one variety. Because we're planting them super dense, what we want is as they grow up, we want the leaves to kind of shade out each other and so that the rows don't have any exposed soil. And then over here, we have six different varieties of radishes that we're gonna start. Radishes do not do well when the weather is anything warmer than about 60 to 65 degrees. So you're gonna allow for much slower development and a lot better growth on your radishes. Then we have two rows of spinach. Spinach, much like your radishes, has to be started early. If you start it late, it's gonna go to seed super fast. Here in Michigan, we're gonna go from 30s and 40s to 70s and 80s like that. 
and you really wanna be prepared for that. So start your stuff early, you will not regret it. Next, we have a row of arugula. Now, I love arugula. It adds this really delicious peppery, buttery flavor. You could use that sauteed or fresh. It is absolutely amazing. It's one of my all-time favorite greens. And then we have parsnips. The reason why we're starting them now is because much like carrots, they like that cold, damp soil, but germination rates go down very fast the warmer and the drier the soil gets. Also, parsnips take around 110 to 140 days to fully develop. Oftentimes, we'll be harvesting our parsnips the next time it frosts, believe it or not. All right, on the end cap of this bed here, we've got cilantro. Now, cilantro, despite you adding it probably to a summer salsa with fresh tomatoes from the garden and fresh jalapenos from the garden, generally you're not growing cilantro in the summer. And that's because cilantro is a cold weather crop. It is much like radishes and much like spinach in that if it gets exposed to much over about 65 to 70 degrees for longer than a week, it starts to go to seed. All right, now when it comes to planting parsnips, by the way, snow, crazy. It is snowing so hard. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is wild. Like it, <laughs> this is not just a flurry. We're in like at a proper, proper snow session right here. It's not quite a blizzard, but it's definitely not a flurry. So anyways, like I was saying, um, <laughs> it's Michigan. Tomorrow we'll be in bathing suits. Uh, so when it comes to planting parsnips, a lot of gardeners make the mistake of only spacing them out about every three to four inches right off the bat. If you're planting high intensity, you want to plant two seeds about every two inches. And that's because parsnips have notoriously low germination rate, especially if you're using seed that is more than a year old. Now we're using fresh seed from migardener.com, but if you have seed left over, you can use it, but germination rates on parsnips becomes notoriously low after that first year. And so we're putting two seeds every two inches. And then if we have to, we can always thin later. Now, if you get 60 to 70% germination rate on your parsnips, that's fantastic. And that means you're just gonna have more luck. You want a nice full row so that that way it's nice and, uh, it's nice and filled out. Because what you don't wanna do, since parsnips will take up to four, uh, 14 to about 20 days to germinate, you don't wanna have your parsnips in the ground for 14, 20 days only to find out that you know you have a bunch of gaps, right? Because then once those parsnips start to grow, they're off to the races. They grow really fast. And it, it's definitely very unfortunate because it's almost impossible then to put fresh seed down, try to fill in those gaps, and expect any good results. Because what's gonna happen is those parsnips are gonna fill out and they're gonna shade out the other ones that are lesser developed. So I prefer to overseed and thin later, especially when it comes to parsnips. All right, so with arugula, we're gonna do the same thing as we do with lettuce and spinach, and it's a leafy green. So the closer you can plant it, the more you're gonna be harvesting. A lot of gardeners really fear this. A lot of gardeners will space out their lettuce, their arugula, their spinach. They'll space them out like four to six inches apart. I can't tell you how big of a mistake that is because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be essentially having one plant and then a bunch of space and then another plant. When you could have plant, 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 and nothing that's open for weed seeds, for the, so, you know, for the sun to beat down on the soil. It's gonna protect your plants from evaporation. It's gonna protect your plants from that hot sun. They're gonna last a whole lot longer and the soil will be maintained. The quality of the soil will be maintained more than if you were just um, you know, planting a few plants every few inches or so. So plant them densely, I promise. Uh, you're gonna really, you're gonna really appreciate the results. The next thing too is make sure your soil is fertile. If your soil is not fertile, you'll have competition for nutrients and soil. If your soil is very fertile, the, the uh, plants can be maintained and sustained in that more close quarters environment without really much competition at all. Now this really throws off a lot of gardeners because believe it or not, in this row here for arugula, I might have planted about 75 to 100 arugula seeds. Not all of them are gonna germinate, but also not all of them are going to, uh, not all of them are going to really produce. Some will get smothered out. They'll kind of naturally, you know, the fittest will naturally survive. And so I might be left with about 40 to 45 arugula plants, 
when it's all said and done. Some are going to get smothered, some won't germinate, but you're going to be left with a nice dense row and that's what you want. We do the same exact thing. I'm not going to really show you much with, uh, with lettuce. You can go back to some of our older videos about, uh, about you know, high intensity spacing and how we grow cut and come again lettuce. We have lots of videos on it, but we're going to do the same thing with our lettuce about one seed every half inch. Believe it or not, it's dense. We do the same thing with our lettuce. We're going to do the same thing with our spinach. All right, now we're going to talk about radishes and beets. Now your root crops like radishes and beets need a tad bit more spacing, but not as much spacing as you probably would think because we can do what's called multi-sowing. Now multi-sowing is where you plant in a cluster of about three seeds and those three seeds when they develop are going to push out and rather than crowd themselves out, they're just going to use their own, their own force of the bulb to kind of force themselves outward and it allows you to grow a few more crops in a given space than you would normally. So we're going to put about a grouping of three seeds every two inches and that seems like really crowded. However, what you'll find is you'll be left with a nice continuous row of radishes in a grouping of three and that's going to be a nice full row without much wasted space. Again, the idea is growing more food in less space. Again, high intensity spacing is an absolutely game changing method. And once you figure it out, once that light bulb pops on, man, it's amazing. It's great. All right. And finally, our carrots. Now, when it comes to carrots, so many gardeners overspace their carrots. Now, carrots are very particular about their spacing. Don't get me wrong. But much like your parsnips, germination rate can be fairly low. If you get 60 to 70% germination rate on your carrots, you're having a good day. If you get 80%, man, go buy some lottery tickets. I'm just saying, it's definitely better to densely sow your carrots, but you are gonna have to go back and thin. So I prefer to plant about two seeds every inch, and I'm gonna thin that down to one plant every inch once they actually get up and growing. Now that is also, I call that on center spacing. That means I'm gonna have one inch in between each, I mean, two inches total between carrots, but it's only one inch on one side, one inch on the other. So if, you're, if your uh, packets typically would say, space your carrots out like two to four inches, com uh, gardeners will commonly space their plants out two inches, meaning you're getting four inches total, right? Way too much space in between your carrots. You're gonna have so much wasted space and not nearly enough productivity. So I typically say you can fit about 16 carrots between 16 and 18 carrots in a square foot. All right, and there we go. There are all the crops that we're gonna be direct sowing. There are some other crops that you could, depending on where you live, you could direct sow. Things like onions, right? You could direct sow your onions. You could direct sow bunching onions as well. We just have ours started in a greenhouse. But you could also direct sow your brassicas, things like kale, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. Again, we start those earlier indoors because it gets warm so fast that that shock typically sends them to seed. So we wanna start those a little bit sooner indoors. We're gonna transition them out into the garden once they get developed. But as far as what we're starting here, if you are in a cold climate and you think, man, it's too early to start stuff, start it. <laughs> it's always better to start your cold weather stuff earlier than later because they can handle the cold, but they can't handle the heat. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. If you wanna get yourself some seeds, go check out mygardener.com. We still have so many seeds, just two bucks a pack, all organically grown, all heirloom, and you are really going to love the quality. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, bye.